So today we're going to look at uh, the first of our percolators. Uh, I've been calling this thrift store perk and have not yet done a percolator. So uh, this is a, a rather beautiful um, Corningware uh, Cornflower Blue six cup percolator. Um, it's perhaps um, a really good example of the most simple of the percolators. A, a form of coffee that I feel is uh, fairly maligned as far as its history and the quality of coffee that it makes and the fact that, you know, on any given Sunday, thousands and millions of people are drinking percolator coffee out of urns that um, it really, it provides coffee to the masses in a way that nothing else does. Um, I bought this one again at a thrift store. I don't know that it was ever used. Its filter basket is uh, pristine. There's no real sign of any use on it. Um, no, no staining inside. It's pretty great. So if you're not familiar at all with percolators, they are an older form of coffee making than the automatic drip maker, um, older than your stovetop espresso maker. And in general, uh, this device or something like this device sits in the bottom. Water gets heated directly under the funnel here, um, causing it to rise up and actually little boiling bubbles rise up here, pushing water. The water perks out the top um, and pops out the top. And on um, you know, many of them, you'll have a glass top like this one uh, where you can see the color of the coffee and you can see the coffee brewing. It's a really magical process. Um, it's a fun little process. In general, I don't tend to like stovetop percolators uh, as much as I like the plug-in electric percolators, um, in part because uh, user error can lead to burnt coffee. Um, as I was talking about before, if the water for coffee extraction needs to be between 195 and 205 degrees, Obviously, boiling water is 212 degrees, which can lead um, to a bitter coffee. Um, I think most of the electric ones that I'm going to be talking about um, don't end up with the bitter coffee uh, right away, but uh, it certainly can be problematic or more likely to happen on a stovetop. However, if you're camping, um, you know, an aluminum percolator might be a great thing to take with you. All right, so I'm going to... Um, put six, you know, the coffee for six cups in here, fill it with water, we'll get it boiling on the stovetop. I was just about to go put water in it and I thought to myself, I don't know how far to fill it. It doesn't seem to have any, um, any markings on the outside. Um, and then I looked inside, and I don't know if you can see that, it is conveniently marked with six, five, and four. So I will be filling the water to the six mark. And again, um, I'll probably do a little bit of research and find out when Corning started making these, but um, if you are a child of the 70s, you probably had cornflower uh, blue things, uh, bakeware in your home. And uh, if it wasn't the cornflower, it was probably something else. All right, so I've got the coffee in here. Again, I went with a slightly medium coarser ground. I'm opting not to use filter paper, even though I think if I was making this for myself, I would use a little piece of filter that I, or paper that I put in, possibly from a, a cut up Chemex filter or just a regular uh, filter basket filter. But for these videos, I'm not using that. Uh, this goes on top. It sets in uh, on top of the water like that, and uh, you turn it on. So we are going from cold water and uh, we will see how long it takes and uh, what the coffee's like. I think one of the things that we're going to see with uh, this stovetop percolator is that it's gonna take a lot longer. Uh, we're a minute in, uh, it's on high heat and there's no sign of, of any love from the, the perking water. Um, sorry, my producer's giggling in the background. She's trying to be quiet, but you know, and the alarm's going off. So I guess I know what I'll be cutting in post. Mac and cheese. 
As you can see, we're three minutes in and still no sign of any perking. It'll come, but you have to have patience. While we're waiting for what seems like it'll be forever uh, for the coffee to start heating up, it hasn't yet started to perk, and we're at almost eight minutes. I thought I would point out that if you felt like you really had to have your corning ware but didn't want to suffer through the inconvenience or potential inconvenience of a stove top, um, you could get an electric model. Now, um, this is one of the, the corning ware electric models are really interesting for a number of reasons that I will discuss when I review them. Uh, I have two of them, uh, both in the corn flour here as well as in the spice of life um, designs. Um, so we will we'll look to those at a later date, but um, Corning did have your back if you didn't want to work with just the stovetop uh, method. After almost 10 minutes, we're starting to hear sounds coming from the coffee maker. Um, although yet we don't, when you can see maybe a little bit of steam coming out, there's hope. Um, but of course the real show hasn't begun. And after almost 12 minutes, it's finally started um, sending water up to circulate over the coffee grounds or to percolate over the coffee grounds. Um, fun fact, the word percolator doesn't come from the fun noise that it makes, but rather from to percolate, which is to, a way of extracting a chemical from a substrate. Wikipedia will tell you all sorts of exciting things. It's beginning to go in earnest now, and you can start to see a little bit of color in the water that's um, coming up through the glass knob. One thing that I love about this particular percolator is the size of the, the glass knob. Uh, it really allows you to just be there in the experience. As you can see, after almost 14 minutes, it's it's going fast and furious. Uh, apparently, again, I learned this last night, the internet tells me that in order to avoid having burnt coffee, you have to remove it um, as soon as it stops perking or just before it stops perking, because that's the time in which the entirety of the pot has reached the boiling point as opposed to just the water at the bottom of the pot. I think we're almost there. So after about 16 minutes, I think we're going to call it done. It looks like we have a decent brown color in our, our perking water, or now coffee, I suppose we could say. And I uh, want to avoid the pitfall of, of burning it. So I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer, then pull it off the stove. We'll measure its temperature and see how it tastes. Okay, it's off. We will pour it and see how, how it looks. Nice dark color. I'm happy with it thus far. It is very hot, uh, as one would expect, uh, which means um, my producer's laughing at me, uh, which means it got you know good flavor extraction from the coffee grounds. Um, just looking at the top of the and I don't know if you can see this, because obviously when I tilt it, the water stays the same level. Um, there's oils on top of the coffee, which uh, is an indicator of not having used any uh, paper filtration to filter out those oils. So it's going to have a slightly oilier taste than it would if we had a, a filtered coffee. So it's Valentine's and uh, we're making Valentine's cookies around here. I probably will pair one of these with uh, my coffee later on. Maybe I'll let you know how it goes. All in all, I really like this coffee maker. It takes forever to make coffee with, which means I probably won't use it very often. Um, you have to be relatively attentive to it for a long time, which is just kind of silly. It, however, is beautiful. Uh, it's got a lot of whimsy to it, nostalgia value, and as I said, 
it makes a comfy jump around and I'm, I don't know, I think it might make it a little more fun. I'm sure it's got sediment in the bottom of the cup. I'm sure there's lots of reasons that people might come up with when not liking this coffee. I find it totally drinkable. I'll enjoy it with a cookie or a ham sandwich or, you know, probably enjoy the coffee more than grading papers. But, um, you know, I won't use this coffee maker very often, but I really do like it. So this is the third coffee maker I've reviewed. Um, honestly, it might be the best coffee I've had in the review process. Um, it is, however, kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, cleaning it up is not great. Uh, it took 18 minutes to uh, make coffee that was drinkable, which is really far too long unless you have the leisure time to sit around making videos about how to make coffee in your thrift store coffee makers. It's also super cute. I mean, I, I, I like this coffee maker a lot. It, it stands out and it's um, just fun. I like the way percolators make the coffee jump around and I think there is a levity and a joy in the coffee that you don't get uh, in any other coffee brewing process. Um, one thing I will point out about this particular coffee maker, um, I mean, if you watched my other video about the Drippolator, um, it's made out of aluminum and you can definitely get the metallic flavor from that aluminum. I'm not exactly sure what Corning used to make the enamel on this, because I don't think this is the same material as their um, other um, patterns of the same style. I don't think this has any you know, glass to it. but. It is enameled with something, and there's absolutely no uh, carryover from the flavor. It might as well be glass, because you don't get any uh, residual flavor, the way you do from stainless steel or the aluminum. So, you know, it made a really great pot of coffee, um, and I like it aesthetically. It has a lot of whimsy, but I'm not sure I'll use it very often.